Spinning back kick, and Stipe goes down. And John Jones pounds away now, the left and a right. And that's it, it's over. Oh, he did Trump's dance. Oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't realize what he was doing. Look at him doing the Trump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Broadcasting live from an undisclosed location. This is the TC MMA podcast with your host, Chris Cross. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Dana White Privilege. Let's go, baby! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go, baby! Dana White Privilege. Privilege. Pr -pr -pr Privilege. Welcome to the TCMMA Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Cross. And welcome to the morning after. I mean, it's over. The big weekend of fighting Jake Paul, Mike Tyson, John Jones, Stipe Miocic is officially uh, a wrap. And what an exciting weekend it was. Not so much Jake Paul and Mike Tyson. But as I told you, Stipe and John Jones will steal the show at the end of the day. And I'm so glad it worked out that way. All decisions across the board until John Jones' third round finish. And just a truly exciting night. Of course, he did the Trump dance. That's what everybody's talking about today. He did a little Trump dance and then gave the thumbs up to Trump. And if you missed that, man, I don't know how you could have. I mean, it's gone viral instantly. Trump walking out. And basically, the first unofficial cabinet meeting. Elon Musk, Vivek, RFK Jr., Tulsi Gabbard, all these people... Uh, and I'm probably leaving some out at UFC 309 last night. And, and as I said during the watch party last night, is it's crazy because the Republicans are popular again. And I really didn't think I'd see this in my lifetime. Like, not popular, but like rock stars. The Republicans, and really they're mostly all Democrats that have got pushed out of their party. And we're not going to get too political today. I'm just trying to set the scene for you. Um... But it used to always be the Republicans who were like, for lack of better words, maybe like the nerdy type, not too exciting, not going against the status quo, whatever that is. Very businesslike. And now all of a sudden, you got guys in the middle, moderates, that have come over to the party and they're rock stars. Because UFC is like a macho sport, right? And then you got all, the, all these people in attendance from Trump's cabinet. And as Dana White said it best in the press conference, and we'll get into some of that stuff that he said, uh, that it's almost like a weight has been lifted off the country's shoulders. Everybody can kind of breathe now. And that's what it does feel like. With Trump uh, being the president-elect. And Dana White going into more, more things. But yeah, that was exciting. So we'll wrap that up with Trump last night. I mean, it was exciting. Seeing him there, as soon as he walked out, I said, okay, this is going to be bigger than Paul versus Tyson. It, I'm just talking about for our channel, and it turned out to be that way because Friday night we had a lot of views on the watch party. And I'm like, how are we going to beat this Saturday? Because it's more than our average Saturday. And then Saturday, all of a sudden, Trump's coming out, and I'm like, okay, that's the X factor. It's going up now. And uh, Joan Stipe on our channel surpassed uh, Paul Tyson by far. So Dana White getting into a lot of other topics. And the one that sticks out to me is when they're asking him about, and this just shows the greatness of Dana White, but they're asking him about doing outdoor stadiums. And he explained the Yankees uh, front office was in attendance, talk, you know, talking to him about doing something in Yankee Stadium. And then he goes into all the you know factors of like, obviously you lose control of the event. And he explained like in baseball, when it rains, they have to have a rain, rain delay. And the media is like, so? And he's like, we're UFC's never doing a rain delay. Does anybody want that? Like, in, bef in, in between fight three and the co-main event, we're going to have an hour and a half rain delay. Like, that, the UFC is different than other sports. The NFL is close. And if not right there, really. But the UFC is different from other sports where it's an experience. NBA is kind of the same way. You don't want to delay in the action. And that's why, you know, you get it every once in a while in football, but it's still football. You know, and it's, 
Less and less stadiums are outdoors, so it's not that bad. But in baseball, when you have a delay, it just takes all the energy out. I remember I went through that as a kid, man. Sat there for like two hours waiting on innings seven, eight, nine, and then nothing happened in those innings. So now you're there three hours. And, you know, you leave the event like with a bad taste in your mouth. You don't ever leave the UFC, uh, UFC event with a bad taste in your mouth unless it comes from the judges or just a, a lackluster fight. And that always comes down. It's not the production. It comes down to the fighters and the situation that's out of the UFC's control. But you don't ever leave there saying, oh, the, you know, in, bet in between before the main event we had to wait an hour right that's boxing's big problem big problem if dana white gets over there and starts a company and just starts to compete uh, he would take over boxing and it seems like that's where he's headed and it's not because he wants to take it over it's because he wants to revive it you know and you see with the ufc like he said and just like i always think man and i explained too the ufc's like boom 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 you know and I'll tell you, when we're doing the breaks for the watch party and we're starting to, took us a while to get to get into a good rhythm, but we're there now. You know, we do like a break of 13 to 15 minutes. And usually when that breaks over, it finishes with the prediction of the upcoming fight and boom, it's fight time within a minute or two. So, I mean, you're talking like 15 to 17 minutes after the previous fight, the next fight is starting. That's after the walkouts and everything. Like the UFC wastes no time. And that's why they're successful because of the experience. Like Dana White said, we don't need a podcast before the main event. Like, it's just crazy, you know. And uh, that's what you're getting. It, it's true, man. An hour before the main, main event, someone's got to do a lot of talking. So great press conference, you know. And I'm watching the press conference and I'm sitting there commentating while I'm watching the press conference. No video on or anything, just simply commentating because I'm agreeing with like 99% of what Dana White says. Now, the one thing I don't, I'm still trying to figure out is he really wants his Tom Aspinall fight with John Jones. John Jones wants Alex Pereira. Dana White says there's really no reason to do that, but if the fans want it, then we'll make it happen. Um, and it really, if you're going to do that, the time is now because both of those guys are getting older. They're not going to last forever. So you got to do it here soon. But, you know, and that might be a good uh, going out party for both fighters. And maybe it does take another two years before we see that. But, and that's a big risk that these both guys both stay on top. You know, because I'm telling you, Hamza is coming. And Hamza might make a run at the right time. As those two guys kind of bow out and clear it out, Hamza runs away with it up all the way up to the top. But listen, that's a discussion for another day. Uh, before we go any further, let's get into... Um, the reaction last night, John Jones, Stipe, Miocic. Check it out. And John Jones just wins the battle every time by landing first when they reset. He's just quicker. Nice elbow by Stipe. Okay. All right, Stipe. Another body shot by John Jones. Those things got to be piling up. Spinning back kick and Stipe goes down. And John Jones pounds away now, the left and a right, and that's it, it's over. John Jones finishes Stipe at the end of round three, and Stipe took, a, I told you, you can't take many of those body shots. And John Jones does a little dance. <laughs> he gives, oh, he did Trump's dance. Oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't realize what he was doing. Look at him doing the Trump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's doing that Trump dance that he does at the uh, at the rallies. That was funny. And they gave Trump the thumbs up, and Trump gave it to him back. John Jones gets the finish here, man. He's 28-1, unbeaten in 20 fights. Which I don't understand that. I mean, he's not, never lost, right? I mean, I guess you got to count the disqualification, but... I think they need to right that ship and make this guy 29-0. and 0. I mean, it's ridiculous. Boom. Oh, my goodness. Look at these combos. Spinning back kick to the rib. Oh, yeah. That was it. That was it. Steve Baby Ocic goes down, man. Unreal. And John Jones went right in for the big finish. He didn't give Steve any time to recover. Wow. John Jones is a bad dude, man. 
Whatever it is, heavyweight division. That's how it goes down. UFC 309. And it couldn't have went better. I mean, and I'm just glad that Trump's in attendance. John Jones thanking him for being there. And regardless of your political views, just enjoy the ride right now. Just enjoy the ride. Because we got rock stars coming into the White House for four years. They can't run again. Trump cannot run again. So there's no fear of that. So just enjoy the ride. We got the World Cup coming in two years. Near near the end of Trump's presidency, we got the Olympics coming to L.A. I mean, it's just, this is it, man. Who knows what the future holds, but right now, it's looking like the golden age of America. As long as Trump, the last time a president was in a situation, it did not go well. Hopefully Trump can get the economy booming. Of course, you got the World Cup and and the Olympics coming, so that's going to be a boost to the economy at some point. So it's just, I mean, it just seems inevitable that we're hitting the golden age right now. And then once the Olympics is over, we're going to be right back into where we're feeling uh, about two months ago because it's going to be an all-out battle between red and blue and that's going to be interesting but that's four years from now I'm going to enjoy the ride I'm going to delay that feeling for as long as possible and just uh enjoy the ride that's the bottom line so a couple other big finishes too last night like Jim Miller over Damon Jackson I couldn't believe this check this out now Damon Jackson driving the right knee and he goes in for the takedown Oh, Jim Miller pulls something here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Jim Miller with the win. Oh, my goodness. I freaking knew it, man. Dang. Forget the age. Jim Miller comes in here and submits Damon Jackson. He's on top of the cage, and New York loves it. This is what you want to see from Jim Miller. I mean, this guy is ageless man this guy is endless this guy regardless of being what 41 i mean this guy always just finds ways to win man just find ways to win damon dives in for the takedown and gets his head stuck jim miller digs it in right away and it's a wrap damon jackson taps huge win for jim miller at ufc 309 yeah so jim miller did his thing and uh the ageless veteran 41 years old, finds a way to win, and Damon Jackson drops the gloves in the octagon, and Jim Miller sends him off, and uh, very frustrating for Damon Jackson because he knows that's a fight that he has to win. Very discouraging. We'll see if he comes back, but right now it looks like he's finished, so we'll see. Then you had uh, Basile Hafez, Oban Elliott, another great finish last night. Check this out. And it's unbelievable. Oban Elliott continues to look good here. Heavy underdog, too. Early around three, nice leg kick by Hafez. And Oban Elliott returns a leg kick, and he's been dominant with leg kicks and body strikes. Now, if it goes to a decision, who knows how those pay off. Oh, big right by Oban! He's going to finish him! He's going to finish him! Oh, my gosh! Oban Elliott finishes Hafez in dramatic fashion, bro. And the crowd is going crazy. Was he like 8-1? to one on... Oh, no, he was the favorite. Okay, okay. I thought he was a big underdog. He wasn't. But ha Hafez gets dominated here at the end of the fight. And Oban Elliott definitely gets the KO to move to 12-2 and two here in the welterweight division. He did it with a big right and then finished with some hammers. The ref waited a minute to step in. Here it goes. Beam! Yes, sir. And he's coming right in. Boom, boom. And it, yeah, he got pushed off with the leg, but the ref could have stepped in earlier, but he still stepped in at the right time. Nonetheless, Oman Elliott gets a huge victory here. Much of the crowds of light at UFC 309. Yeah, so another big finish there. I think there was one more, but Oban Elliott coming through in a big way. And things slowed down in the main car, right? But there was some action. Uh, early on and you had Mickey Gall back against the wall seven and six has to win against Ramiz Brahimov or he falls a seven and seven and probably ousted from the UFC so I think I'm thinking going in Mickey Gall is going to get the dub 
Let's see. And a nice left-right combination by Mickey Gall. Now Brahima takes a right. Look out. I mean, Mickey, Mickey Gall's got to be desperate in this fight. Ooh, he takes a leg kick. I mean, if he falls here, he moves a 7-7. Seven and seven. That'd be a terrible look for him. Probably out of the UFC. So this is a big fight. Again, for Mickey Gall, who lands a right and takes a right. Now, I don't know if he can take it from... Oh, Ramiz knocks him down. Gall's in trouble. And that's it. Ramiz Brahimal climbs the cage. It's over just like that. And back-to-back -back KOs here at UFC 309. Ramiz Brahimal is pumped up. And Mickey Gall is 7-7. Seven and seven, And you might as well say goodbye now to Mickey Gall. That's it here. Welterweight division. UFC 309. Yeah, so Mickey Gall is done. 7-7. Seven and seven. We got that pick wrong. Rough night on the picks, but at least we got the main event, right? So that's how it looks. Six and six on the night. Started off rough in the prelims. Two and four to start the night. Luckily, we go four and two uh, or three and two. No, four and two down the stretch, yeah. Two and four to start, four and two down the stretch, including wins by Bo Nickel, Oliver, and John Jones. To keep, you know, we're three and six going into the into the watch party last night, but twenty two and seventeen in the main event, and exactly what I told you when we were nineteen and seven. Everybody, calm down, don't panic. <laughs> you know, nineteen and seven is terrible. We had a rough year, starting four and seven on the year, really set us back, and it's been a battle ever since. But we're going to go on a three fight win streak minimum, and next week's going to be a tough one. So I don't know how that's going to go. Oh no, not next week. Yeah, next week is Piotr Jan versus Figueredo. So we'll see how that goes. That's going to be a tough one. A couple tough ones coming up. But we built ourselves a little room uh, in the win-loss column. We're plus five, which is not great, but it's better than being negative five, right? Overall, even night, right? So we're still five uh, wins away from being plus 100, which is the ultimate goal every year. I think last year we were more like plus 130, 140, so... A little bit of setback this year, but still doing well. 284 and 189, we'll take it. We'll absolutely take it. Now, as far as the do list, not much is going to change because John Jones won last night, so he's still number two behind Hamza. Shavkat's fighting, which we got to try to get to this prediction today. Shavkat and Ian Gary, did I hear that right? If so, that's crazy. Tom Aspinall, still number nine. Put at a number three, which is why you can see that would be a huge fight for us. Either way it goes. And where's Oliveira at? Wow, he's way down at 19. Bo Nichols, 17. Bo Nichols not going anywhere. Colby Covington is back. I mean, he moves up just because he's back. I mean, he's sliding because we don't ever see him. Charles Oliver, you know, shows he's one of the top three lightweights, so we got to jump him back up into the top 15. So those are just some previews uh, of what's to come on the do list, but that's the way it stands right now. Now the Q&A is back. It's been a while. I mean, it's just been a grind with a contender series 10 11 straight weeks of ufc it's been a grind to get anything extra in as we're just trying to hold on and then we got a 3 a.m card next week goodness gracious before the break and it, things will slow down now at the end of the year but doc uh, methodical says tyson is going to ruin this kid's hopes and dreams i cannot wait and this is what everybody was saying uh leading into this fight and it's like what did you expect from a 58 year old Mike Tyson, honestly. Nathan Johnson, Tyson is paid off, guaranteed. You know, I know some people said that, but that's because of the disappointment. I don't think so this time. I'm, I'm willing to entertain those things, you know, a lot of times. But this time, I don't think so. I think, you know, Mike Tyson just, he fought the best he could at that age. Mr. Mojo. So he's going to run till the old man's tired. Basically. Basically. That was the goal at the beginning, right? You don't want to face a 100% a fresh Mike Tyson, even at 58, for the first two or three minutes. It's going to be scary. But wear him down, Jake Paul did, and then it's his fight the rest of the way. Milky Way music. He's never been hit as hard as Tyson hits before, and when it happens, Jake will panic. And there might have been a, a momentary panic there in the first and second round, but it, it didn't look like there was that much of that for Jake Paul. And, of course, these are all before the fight. I'm trying to show you as I was talking to a few friends on the live stream on Facebook yesterday that everybody 
one video we had at the very beginning, 222 comments and all 222 were for Mike Tyson. I mean, it was crazy that people really thought he was going to win. And I was scared to jump in too deep because I'm like, what if Tyson wins? You know, there's a, there's a chance there. So I was back in Paul, but, you know, not 100% confident. Add key. It reminds me of Colby. We're talking about Colby Covington versus Jacqueline Buckley now. He says it reminds me of the Colby Woodley fight. I don't think that Buckley has a lot of stamina due to his physique. If Colby can pressure him and mixing his game, he can win for sure. And that's what I'm predicting there. If you haven't seen that prediction yet, sneak preview, right? Sneak peek. Colby Covington wins that fight. Although Jacqueline Buckley is surging now with like five straight wins. And we need to finish the year with a with a victory. And I think it was Colby who let us down last year. Hopefully he doesn't do it again this year. And I think I did say it was the last fight of the year. Is it? Yeah, it is. It is. Because you got UFC 310 the week before. So again, Colby Covington, one of the last fights of the year, fighting in December. I think he's going to get that win. But Buckley uh, certainly a solid competitor. Now, Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano, people like Eduardo uh, Dolugo, it looks like, says robbery of the year. Paul Tyson reaction, steadfast. How can someone fight someone in a wheelchair? See, and this is the thing now that Paul wins. What did I tell you would happen? And I understand the comment for sure. But what it, a lot of people that were back in Tyson are now going to be saying, and I don't know what, who he was back in, but a lot of people that were back in Tyson are going to be saying, oh, he's old and da-da-da. You know, Jake Paul's never going to get his props until he beats a real boxer. And then he probably still won't get his props. Charles Willie, Tyson all the way. Paris Jovic, what a joke of a fight. Uh, Doc Methodical, Tyson won't let him pass three rounds. So, again, these are all the comments leading up to uh, the fight. Back to Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano. So there was a lot of comments that night because people were upset over the uh, the uh, decision for Taylor versus Serrano. They were upset with the the, the main event. Then you got to wait an hour to watch it, and it stinks. But, you know, listen, that's why we do UFC. Steph Wheat says, I'll say it for you. Robbed and rigged. Taylor and Serrano. I don't know if it was rigged, but the decision maybe is what he's saying. The master. Dana apparently said that Hamza's next fight is going to be for the belt. Now you're talking my language. It's going to be for the belt in 2025. What are your thoughts? And what I responded to the master is Tyson wins. Or, I mean, Hamza wins. <laughs> yeah, it's real simple. Hamza wins. At Kenneth Bruner's back, he said Bo Nickel looked awful. Yes, he did. And uh, Thomas Mamur says, God bless you, brother. And I appreciate it, man. God bless you, too. Long weekend, great uh, UFC card to wrap this thing up. And thank goodness John Jones got to finish because if we had like seven decisions, you know, a lot of decisions and all these big time fights this weekend, it would have ruined the weekend. But John Jones came through and at least gave us something to talk about. And then the Trump dance obviously goes viral. So, you know, the UFC uh, is on top uh, once again. And not once again, they stay on top, but just even in a weekend where everybody wanted to see what was going to happen, the UFC reigned supreme. And I couldn't be happier. Listen, it's time to get into some uh, football, baby. I got to go watch my Dolphins. So we got to wrap this thing up. For now, this is your boy Chris Cross. This is the TC MMA Podcast. Have a great day and God bless. Peace. Peace.